Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Extreme Performance Series. Today, I have a, a, a good friend of mine. Uh, we've worked together for a long time. Joshua, could you introduce yourself real quick? Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Joshua Schnee. I've been on VMware's performance team for about 16 years. A good portion of that has been uh, either assisting or being the technical lead for VMware, which is uh, one of the industry standard uh, benchmarks that VMware has put out. So VMark 4 just came out uh, a month or two ago. Can you just give us a quick highlights of, of what's new? What, what's what's the great new things with uh, VMark 4? Well, you know, VMark 3 had a lot of success, but one of the things we really wanted to do was to make it super easy for new people to try to give it a shot, right? So there's a wide variety of why you might want to use VMark. As you've seen online, there's lots of folks who use it to publish things so that you can see how their servers might perform, right? But also, we have lots of customers who want to use it internally for bake-offs or whatever to learn about how their internal hardware or software stacks are performing. And we want to make it super easy for them to download and get going quickly. We added a bunch of stuff there. We've made it faster to actually deploy. And we can talk all sorts about that. But in short, we really cut the time down. And we've added a bunch of new workloads to kind of modernize it, right? As technology has evolved, data center seems to be changing. We added a bunch of stuff to make it more representative of today's data centers. Very cool. So it's 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 got some new workloads, and it's uh, faster to set up uh, and to get running in your tests. And I think what we're going to talk about today is kind of the details around all these new features with VMark 4. Sure. Yep. We'll give you a high level overview and kind of walk you through some of these, uh, what I think are really cool changes. VMark uses this concept of a tile. Now, tiles is basically a unit of work. And we have a bunch of different workloads. And I'll talk quickly about what those workloads are. But the idea is you can run one tile and then add more tiles. Say, for instance, you wanted to you know, get your system to fully saturation. Um, or you can just run it as is, right? So you don't have to, but the single unit of work is a tile. So VMark uses this concept of a tile as a unit of work. Now, within this tile is a bunch of VMs and different workloads. And the idea is you run a single tile and you might get a certain amount of uh, system utilization. And if you wanted to increase that utilization, you just add more tiles. One of the things that we already kind of mentioned was we added a bunch of new VMs and, and applications and workload applications. In VMark 3, you had DVD store. That was one of our workloads there. You also had auction, which is weather vane auction, labeled here as auction. And then you had standby. So new, we have NoSQL bench. Now this is a Cassandra-based NoSQL benchmark that really drives home, you know, today's like, all right, and so one of the new workloads we've added is NoSQL Bench. Now, this is a cluster Cassandra benchmark representative of those style of applications, and it really adds some interesting complexity to the benchmark. Additionally, we've got Social Network. This is a microservices environment. It's got containers running within it. It simulates a Facebook-like environment where there's a graph database, et cetera, those types of user interactions occurring. And we've added uh, Kubernetes, a component of Weathervane Auction this time. So not only does it run one of the uh, instances and in VMs, it also adds Kubernetes. Also to note is DVD Store has been updated. And this is, you know, added a bunch of new features, more stores, parallel, parallel loading, which we'll talk about in a second. Additionally, you have your similar infrastructure operations. And for folks who aren't familiar, this is all running within a cluster. So we also have vMotions occurring, storage vMotions occurring, and then we have clone and deploy operations, which have been modernized that have you know, hot add memory, hot add CPU, it's doing some work. Uh, these, these are your maintenance operations that are simulated within your clusters. Yeah, so the tile concept is really cool because it allows us to put a bunch of workloads uh, in a single benchmark um, and get a, and get a score as a result. Where a lot of benchmarks that are out there that people may be familiar with have seen are often focused on a single application 
or even a micro benchmark would just be focused on a single operation like disk activity or network activity. The tile concept is awesome. All the new workloads that you guys have put in as well really starts to reflect, I think, what's going on out there in a lot of customers' environments, things that have changed since VMark 3 had been released. DVD store, which obviously uh, is kind of near and dear to my heart. We switched from the MySQL version over to the Postgres version. In addition to that, took advantage of some of the new features that I put in in the most recent version of DVD store that allows it to uh, create and load the database much faster. Why don't we talk a little bit about some of the usability updates? Not only do we want to make it easier, we want to make it quicker for people to get value from actually running the benchmark. Because most people actually want to see the results. They don't want to spend the time doing all the work in advance. How do we do that? And you don't have to read all this. It's a bunch of text, but I'll kind of hit some of the high notes for you. So we have this new quick start mode, which effectively does a bunch of the automation that a user used to have to do. Say, hey, I want to do quick start, and it'll set up everything. It'll deploy the VMs, configure them, you know, make sure the networking is right, load in all of those databases or other services, get everything going, and then generate, generate results for you. We also increased the number of provisioning modes. We had a bunch of folks who wanted advanced stuff, but again, as far as making it easy, now you can just say, hey, I want to run on one data store, want to be as fast as possible when getting immediate results. That's there too. Much, much more simple. Um, additionally, we added partial tiles. We wanted to give people an opportunity to add just a little bit more work. So say, for instance, you were, got your system to like 80% with two or three tiles, and you wanted to get up a little bit more, well, you could just run a subset of the tiles application workloads and get that little bit more out of your systems. Another thing we added was sustainable power. What we did here is by default, you'll get power metrics from your hosts under test. You have a really cool uh, HTML output that gets created. You can see your power consumption over time. It does allow you to understand your power consumption, maybe even compare it. Like I said, if you were maybe comparing different servers in-house. We added alert integration. Whether you're using Google Chat or Slack, we have integration. It's a simple thing, Azure your webhook, and then you get alerts from the benchmark about how things are going. And we really focused in on automation. So, oh, you want to delete a VM or you want to add a NIC to a VM or a disk. These kinds of things are already done by the service. Now you can use them and it doesn't even have to be for VMware for purposes. Awesome. And there's a, there's obviously a, a really great documentation guy that comes along with VMware 4. That, that goes oh, yeah. through all of these advanced options that you've mentioned and also how to use Quick Start to get started quickly. So. No surprise here, a Quick Start section to help users first time into the benchmark. How simple really is it? You download a single OVA from you know, the VMark uh, product page. Um, you deploy it into your environment. You add a NIC, a little bit of storage, and then you run that Quick Start mode. That's it. After that, You've already got your first result, and then you can benchmark it, you know, how you see fit, modify things, update settings, whatever that is. It's really that and simple. So I got, a, I got a question for you, Josh, now. How do you uh, handle the licenses that you need to get to uh, run this benchmark? You don't need any licenses to run this benchmark, so that's how we handle it. So <laughs> exactly. <it's> all, <laughs> yeah, I, I knew that was the answer. <laughs> Yeah, and that's by design, right? We want to make sure that we can give this out to everybody. The other thing that we, you know, I wanted to do is a little bit of a comparison, right? For the folks that are, you know, former VMR3 users, okay, well, how easy is it? How much time am I really saving? So everybody remembers the properties files that were in there. Typically took about 15 minimum parameters. Then you would provision your first tile wait eight hours if your storage was good. Then you had to do some more manual stuff. Then you finally got to running the benchmark, right? And after that, that was your first result. Then you might add more tiles and kind of go on your way. VMark 4, your day one usage is a single command line. Now you can still use those property files if you want to, but you don't have to anymore. And now you can simply say, I want to run against my data center in a single command. So whether you specify, do you want to run a turbo mode, which is a shortened, hey, I just want to see how things are going. You're going to immediately get that completed. You'll get a score. 
you'll get enhanced AC unit output that shows you throughput and latencies, et cetera. And we've made this fully automatable so that you, the user, could come in and quite easily say, I want to completely deploy VMR, get some results, and then delete everything and have a clean environment like you were never there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is a much, much easier to use, much more approachable as a benchmark uh, than VMR 3 was. So uh, it's much more um, accessible for, for lots of users, um, even people that never used VMR any of the previous versions before. This is, this is the one to, to go try. Yeah, and it is kind of complete the example I was trying to make there. It was like eight plus hours to get that first result or actually just build and before you got the result. In our environments with, you know, medium level uh, hardware, I've seen folks get one or two tiles completely provisioned and Turbo One run results within about two hours. So yeah, much, much great. faster. Yeah. And that's thanks to the, a lot of the effort that folks like you and other application workload owners have done to speed up the database loading, et cetera. So thanks, Todd. Yeah, fun stuff. So VMark 4 is out. It's available for free. Um, it's much easier to use. And it has uh, new workloads that reflect uh, today's data centers much more so than VMark 3 did. So um, yeah, I mean, it's something that we've, we've been where I was on the team. I worked on some of this. Um, there was a, a whole team of engineers um, involved behind the scenes, so um, I think all that effort shows in 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 the in the product, and um, look forward to to seeing people get out there and using it and um, and uh, using it for whatever their internal testing or you know possibly submitting results. Um, all that stuff is 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 very exciting to see as we have this new version out. And one last thing, as folks are getting to to get some experience with the benchmark, you may run into questions or want to get some clarification about something or provide us feedback, please check us out at the community site. I think Todd's going to link it for you. We're very active there. Post your questions and somebody from the team will actually try to help. Yeah, I'll definitely put links in for the community site, um, how to get to VMark 4, all that stuff will be below the video. So yeah, please please use the, the links to explore further. Thank you, Josh. I'd like to thank everybody for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing everybody on more episodes of the Extreme Performance Series. Thank you.